Good morning. I'm Muriel Bowser. We are um, in the John W. Wilson building. We have concluded our monthly meeting with the council and the mayor council breakfast, uh, where we had uh, briefings on organizational no changes uh, in the mayor's organization and the council's organization, as well as updates from uh, the Metro general manager and the attorney general for the district uh, and a public uh, safety update from my public safety team. Uh, we're happy to answer your questions. Your reaction to Mr. Donahue's numbers, I guess you, you knew them, but the, 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 the homicide rate this year is still up, I guess worse than all of last year, but, you know, so far this year. And then we had the triple murder. What are your thoughts on this? Well, Sam, we are obviously very concerned. Any level of violence in our city uh, concerns all of us. Um, our goal today was to talk about the holistic approach that we are taking to combating violence um, from public health perspectives to law enforcement enforcement perspectives and working with our council and legis uh, and federal partners to have all the tools we need to combat uh, crime. Um, so we continue to be very focused, I think you heard in that room as a city, um, on the things that we need uh, to do to drive down crime. Can I ask the Chief a question? Sure. So Chief, uh, you know, I've sort of observed this over the years. Um, it seemed like Chief Ramsey, when these, we'd have these spikes, if you would, he'd haul a lot of people out on the street. Uh, Chief Lanier had what they called an AHOD. Is there any initiative that you've got, given uh, that this, we're, this we're situation? We're a little bit more precise in our deployment uh, with regards to the areas where the shootings are happening. Uh, like the deputy mayor said inside there, the shootings, the number of shootings that we've had in our city really hasn't changed. Uh, the lethality has. Uh, and there are some precise areas in the city where that's occurring. Uh, we're going to ensure that we have patrols in those precise areas. But uh, through investigations, we're also going to look at the folks that are involved in violence in those areas. And we're going to be precise about targeting those individuals and make sure that they're not uh, continuing to create violence in our community. Mayor Bowser, did you have concerns about the ethics allegations against uh, Chris Gelthard when you appointed him to your cabinet again? Uh, Chris Gelthard uh, has been an outstanding uh, public servant for the district, and he will be a great leader for DPW. Uh, and I am uh, f familiar with um, uh, the, the Vegas uh, findings, and I'm very comfortable moving forward. And then on sports betting, do you support the efforts to give a sole source uh, contract to Intralot? I'm sorry? With sports betting, do you support uh, the efforts to give a sole source uh, contract to Intralot for the online side of sports betting? Um, the CFO has moved a compelling um, proposal, and we support his recommendation. Chief, can we ask you about the, this crime survey, that, and Mayor, if you can weigh in on this too. Is this Elucid? Is this the company that you're going to be using? And how that data will both be shared with the public and then we see in LA and New York how they, you just talked about increasing deployment in areas. This is used, I guess, to predict where violence will occur and also give you some kind of indication on the satisfaction in neighborhoods with your department. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, whenever you're uh, increasing the, the level of police activity in any, any particular neighborhood, you want to have some sense as to what impact uh, that police presence is having on the community. Uh, and this tool is going to be able to provide the police department with valuable feedback uh, at the end of the day, uh, and the mayor mentioned this when she was speaking earlier, when you look back at homicides we've had in our city uh, and how they've sig reduced significantly uh, from the mid-90s, uh, the way that you do that is you build trust with your community. So we want to ensure that any police operations that we take in any part of our city are well received by, by the community that we're serving. So all that data, what will be the transparency with the data? Because in LA we see there were some issues with community groups who didn't feel like all the data was being shared with the community. I think they either sued or went through FOIA to try to get that data. Yeah, I, I don't know what the state of affairs is in LA. There's no intention uh, on our part to hide this data. In fact, I think this is an area where we have to be transparent. Hey, Chief, real quick, can you, as the Deputy Mayor mentioned in the meeting, the fact that the number of shootings is remaining somewhat consistent, but the people dying from shootings is changing. Can you just delve into that a little bit more and talk about how it is that shootings are getting more lethal? Is it the type of gun, this, this scenario where the shootings are happening? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things, and the deputy mayor did a good job of, of identifying some of them, is that we're seeing uh, more daylight shootings. Uh, we're seeing shootings uh, with multiple rounds being fired. Uh, we're seeing shootings where the uh, the 
suspects are closer to the victims. Uh, so they're much, they're, you know, they're getting in very close proximity during daylight hours uh, and the wounds are, be, are more significant. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one of the things we've got to take a look at. Uh, it's the, the, the uh, capacity of the, uh, you know, the weapons that are out there. Uh, the other thing I think we have to look at, though, and, and I say it all the time, is the availability of these weapons uh, in our community and then uh, more specifically about the repeat violent offenders uh, and the, the folks that are involved in this behavior. I think, you know, a lot of the strategies that we talk about of uh, violence interruption, providing opportunities, uh, all of that thing, all of those are, are very important uh, to reduce, reducing violence uh, in our community. Uh, some of those things don't happen as quickly as we like. Uh, so you also need a law enforcement component where you're dealing with the repeat violent offenders. Uh, the, you know, we didn't have a, a triple homicide all of last year. Uh, and we had one this year. So if you talk about the lethality of shootings, uh, that's a prime example. Chief, with your time at MPD, do you know what Councilmember Trown might have meant by saying tracking uh, firearms and vehicles? Uh, I, I, I didn't know exactly what he was referring to, so I'm going to have a follow-up conversation with him. I, I can tell you this, that we do have uh, technology that's available to some of our units uh, for detecting weapons that are recently discarded uh, by people. So that may be uh, what he may have been referring to. Mayor, um, Ms. Uh, Councilmember White was talking about illegal guns, which obviously got a response from you. You're saying you need to focus on that. He was talking about getting to these bad actors right away as opposed to the Pathways Program, which takes longer. Can you talk about your reaction to that and if that should be folded into the larger plan? Well, it's already a, a part of the plan. I think that I'm not sure what he was saying. So as, as Chief said, we will have to have a little bit more detailed conversation with him. Uh, he did mention, however, that he thought he was his community was having a crime emergency. Uh, he did mention that he wanted the police to have more uh, active engagement with finding people who have guns. Um, and I, I think those are two issues that we want to follow up with him on. What, what, what's your reaction to him saying that people in his neighborhood just don't feel safe? I, I recognize that. Yes. So, Mayor, um, what's, what's the progress on the front of this, uh, you know, the, the office over in uh, old 6B, the Office of Neighborhood? Mm -hmm. uh, how's that going? Is it showing results or can you? Uh, it's, we've had less than a year of experience with it. Um, it is an outgrowth of the Council's NEAR Act. Uh, and our commitment to um, interruption in a public health approach to dealing with these issues in addition to what MPD does. Um, and I think that uh, we are committed to funding it and uh, keeping it funded um, and um, seeing results. And the, the council member Gavin has talked about, I guess, $45 million specifically for, I guess, Violence prevention, mm -hmm. how does that work? Um, that's if it's realized. I think he's suggesting that the estimates um, show that the sports betting can um, garner as much as $90 million. I don't know um, if that will be realized or not, but I think the legislation has half of the um, proceeds from sports betting going to early childhood programs and have going to um, violence prevention programs, but it depends on how much is raised. So if he, I know who, somebody talked about how New York was using, uh, uh, spending a lot of money in this area. Well, New York, um, and you know, they also mm -hmm. used and implemented stop and frisk in New York for many years. Um, so I wouldn't suggest that um, cure violence was the only uh, reason that New York has been able to drive down shootings. You they also have a, I don't, I don't know, but I'm, I definitely wouldn't say um, that we can say one set of programs has led to reductions in homicide in New York City. Uh, they also, their courts treat um, gun offending um, very seriously. Would you like to see more stop and frisk in D.C.? No. Hey, Mary, real quick on the metro thing, they said there at the end, uh, so the general manager, it seemed obvious enough that you're not satisfied with the options that they're presenting to you. What would you rather see Metro come back to D.C. with to kind of address some of the concerns that the city has about lack of service, uh, late night service? Um, I, I did not support them changing the hours in the first place. So, so the four options, you heard Councilmember Evans asking for your guidance on how he should uh, vote. Councilmember Evans knows my guidance. 
can you tell us our, your guidance? Can you tell the public what you would tell him? What, what of those four options, which would you those four them? options to me uh, need a lot of work. Um, I, I think we know when an agency doesn't want to do something, they present the the worst possible scenarios. So my challenge with Metro is to go back and do some more work. What we didn't see in there, how is Metro making their operations more efficient um, with the very substantial funding um, that we gave them? Very random question. There's a census data, census data recently that showed the DC population growth is slowing down. There's more people having kids, but more people moving in. Do you have any theories on why we're not getting the same kind of thousand people a month that the city was always was getting in years past? Do you have a feeling it has to do with crime, with housing, with schools, anything along those lines? Uh, we were growing at a very fast clip, and I think we all expected some leveling of that growth. Mayor, with the uh, first hearing tomorrow on the uh, school change phenomenon, do you have anything to say about what is fair to be? I'm glad that the, the hearings are happening, and I'm looking forward to his confirmation. Anything about the new uh, makeup of the uh, Committee of the Whole taking over some schools' oversight, uh, sharing it with the Education Committee? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, my only uh, concern would be that we don't want to see schools' issues, um, um, you know, the time to consider them doubled. Um, and I think that has been the commitment of the chairman of the council and the education committee that they would work collaboratively um, so we don't have two different council committees doing the same thing, which would double the time that our directors and uh, staff are preparing for things. We're happy to, to have the oversight, but we just want an efficient use of time. Is that mortgage Thanks. assistance program still happening? You know, I don't, it, it, is, it is approved and it's in place. And actually, I didn't get an update on what their applications were um, from Friday. Uh, it's 94 applicants so far. Nobody's gone completely through the process just yet. Is it going to continue in the short term? Or it, is it? Are they still accepting applications? Yeah, so it'll, it'll, uh, it'll remain open uh, in the short term. Uh, they haven't uh, taken anyone fully through the process just yet. Uh, but when that is available, uh, it'll remain available so that they can see how it, it is utilized. I guess the idea is they go like a month without pay and have to pay the mortgage for February still. Correct. So just on the shutdown, given the, the fiscal impact, the fiscal City and the fact that that could impact the amount of money you guys have to work for work within the budget <coughs> is there anything you would be telling the council don't spend money on this or this is a program we got to cut I mean anything that you're saying that maybe we should trim our belts on uh, we're not ready for for that discussion yet Martin but it is um, obviously if we see uh, a reduction and we should also think about planning for future reductions um, and as, as I mentioned early on um, that we should also be planning and how we're spending for a, a real recession um, and because there are a lot of predictions that we could see some sl some slowdowns across the nation um, and so that just means all of us thinking about new programs um, and making sure that in recessionary times that uh, we would e we can support them, not have to cut them back, and not have to ask the taxpayers for more money. Hey, Rose, I'm sure, do you have a final number on the cost of the D.C. government, particularly on the, the services that you picked, like the trash pickup, and, and what is your, are your plans for sending a bill to the feds? Um, we're working on it right now. I don't have um, the final number, but basically, uh, if you look at the, the weeks, uh, the bi-week cost, they would be about the same for the 35 days. So you're still planning on... on we will seek reimbursement, yes. And whether... Can you tell us about weather? Yes. Uh, did, oh, there he is. Okay. Um, it's going to snow today. <laughs> uh, so we expect uh, some precipitation in the early afternoon. That's going to change over to snow. Uh, we think about 4 or 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, that will be accompanied by about a 20 degree drop in temperatures, and we're expecting uh, temps to be in the 20 degrees into the late evening and through the overnight. So the D.C. snow team has been activated. Uh, the National Highway System, which is our contractor that does our primary routes, are on the road now. Uh, our municipal fleet will deploy at 12 noon today. 
Uh, we've done some pre-treatment across the district, but in anticipation of the rain, we have not done a lot of that, uh, and we cannot drop the salt until the rain transitions to snow. Otherwise, we will be wasting that material on the roads and it will wash away. So we'll have a full, what we call a full deployment uh, throughout the day from 12 p.m. to midnight and another full deployment overnight hours. Uh, our team will monitor road conditions this evening uh, and start to make assessments about government operations and schools late tonight and through the morning. So what are they doing until it starts to snow? Uh, we have done some uh, pre-treatment, and so we'll do some of those bridges and overpasses uh, with some material, because we're not sure of the extent of the rain. The rest of our crews will pre-position -pre so that when it transitions to snow, we can immediately be on the routes. Our crews can be on their assigned routes and begin to drop salt. Do you anticipate closing D.C. public schools early today? Uh, we don't anticipate closing schools early today. We have made the decision to cancel evening events uh, for DCPS and uh, Parks and Recreation after our aftercare programs uh, conclude about 6 p.m. this evening. And the feds are, I think you heard you say the feds are closing early. The feds are closing two hours early so that folks can get off the roads and start their commutes uh, to wherever they need to be a bit earlier. That will help our crews and help the overall traffic flow through rush hour.